We do have a very special guest right now with us in the studio, a man that played a tremendous game today, that is Lev Aronian. Lev, welcome to the studio, welcome to St. Louis, welcome back to St. Louis. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the format of the event, how do you approach it and how do you feel about the format of this event? Um, I think <laughs> when you play chess for uh, 30 years, <laughs> you don't care about the format. You're just, <laughs> you're just happy to be in front of the board and to have a chance to compete with some of the best players in the world. So it's, uh, I mean, I'm happy with every format, but of course the format is very exciting because uh, normally uh, one mistake and you're gone uh, in a knockout tournament. Here you have a chance to, you know, be kind of a zombie and come back, <laughs> come back to life. Tell us a little bit about this particular matchup against Ray Robson. I was doing some research and I couldn't find any games between you two. Uh, is this a completely new opponent for you? Yes, we have never played, which is quite surprising because uh, Ray is a, an established uh, player. Uh, you know, I have uh, high regard for him as one of the most talented players uh, from America. But surprisingly, yeah, we've never played. Uh, and uh, yeah, today was our first game and uh, it worked well for me. Quite an intense game. Let's uh, go through that one. Take us through the opening phase. Uh, actually, we got to this point, uh, Levon, a very interesting Benoni. We won't ask you about your preparation, but after the move A2, A3, uh, take it from here. How did you like your position and uh, what was your feeling? I can't really say I liked my position, but uh, this is uh, not the type of position that Ray has played before. I, he, he kind of surprised me with first move E6 mm -hmm. and that he went for this line. And I was thinking, okay, the position is quite balanced. And uh, yeah, at this moment, this was definitely a critical moment in the game after knight b3. Uh, because so far, I think uh, all uh, Ray's moves make perfect sense. Sure. And here, uh, I think he went for this inaccurate b6. I thought that uh, after knight e5. Knight Edgar 5? Yeah. Yep. The, the problem was that. I was kind of hoping that knight d4 would work, but it doesn't at all, because bishop takes a4, queen a4, knight d3, rook e3, and knight f2 uh, is crushing oh, that's white. Nice. Because king f2, queen f6, knight f3, queen b2, and yeah, this is some yum yum time. <laughs> <laughs> very nice variation, for yeah. sure. And so I thought, what am I going to do? Because from distance, I thought maybe I have this knight c5 after knight e5. Uh, yeah, Sorry. after knight e5. I thought Which knight? knight e5, knight bc5. Mm -hmm. Bishop c6, uh, knight b7. I thought maybe this will work. Yeah. But it also doesn't work because <laughs> bishop takes g2, king g2, and queen d7 is extremely powerful here. Because uh -oh. uh, after knight uh, bc5, queen c6, f3, knight g4, is very painful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Otherwise, wow. white is doing fine, but this knight g4 is extremely painful. Wow. So I probably had to opt for something like f4 here after uh, knight bc5, bishop c6, and you know, uh, f4, and hope for equality. Like something like f4 here? Yeah. I see. Yeah, I really need to push this knight away because he's feeling too good this night there. Exactly. So you were very happy about this opportunity with the move b6 to play the move bishop takes e6. Yeah, because after this at least I'm never worse. And I just want to point out the fact that actually this game has been seen before in five games. And knight to e5 does give black the advantage mm. with the variation that you showed. Wow. wow. Were you aware of that even? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Were you aware you were in a worse You study, <laughs> you prepare, but not to that depth that you could guess that yeah, Ray well, would I, play I was this. surprised, guys. Come yeah. on, give me a break. <laughs> exactly. Hey, look, I'm really completely with you. Yeah. Uh, and quickly, after d4, f3, everything went very smoothly, it felt, uh, Levon, after. Yeah, well, I was thinking that the position should be slightly better for me, but uh, it's nothing really special. And here, of course, it looks very good. You know, he had this funny option. I'll just quickly show you. With the bishop on c7, he has this rook fd8. Uh, right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. I have to play rook ad1, otherwise knight c3, rook d4, and he gets tremendous compensation. Agreed. Uh, bishop e5. 
Yeah, yeah. we're taking a look. <laughs> yeah. We... But I have to play knight b6, which is giving me the advantage. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> the point is that rook d4, knight d4, bishop d4, knight d5 I've got. <laughs> Marvelous. That is, yes, bishop e5, very, very shocking. <laughs> <laughs> because of queen f3. Yeah, I yeah this rook yeah. d2 move after d is... Exactly. Yeah, the funniest part is the engine wants to play bishop b8, wait for you to play one of the knights to c3, and then go bishop e5. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, I saw this idea, yeah. Fantastic. So, essentially, because we've got so much going on, Levon, uh, we were going to go back. Uh, the ending became winning just about what point, in your opinion? When did you say, okay, this is 90% yeah, sure? It's such a difficult position to play with little time. I thought this is practically losing for black. I see. So at this point, it's... Uh, and then, it's you know, this F4 trick is always working in this position, so... This F4 I'm glad trick. I knew. Yeah, that, that I have this king d7, f4, mm -hmm. and take 6, f5. At any exactly. Moment. Yeah. Exactly. We did. So white is winning because of that f4, f5, f6 thrust. Exactly. Our our resident chess coach, coach of the year, has pointed it out. It must be some classical knowledge. Levon, congratulations. Great start much. and good luck in your game tomorrow. Thank you. Absolutely a pleasure to see Levon playing. The